very much again for joining us here for this post-match press conference following South Africa versus West Indies. We're joined by South Africa captain Temba Bavuma, um, who will take questions here from the floor, and then we will move over to Zoom to um, answer your questions, please. Thank you for joining us there. If you do have a question on Zoom, please can I ask you to raise your hand in the platform. If you're selected, you'll need to unmute and then mute immediately afterwards. Um, we'll start with questions in the room, and Temba, um, Congratulations on the victory today. What are your immediate thoughts and feelings on the performance? Obviously ecstatic. Um, that, was part of, that was obviously the plan to come and get a win, to get our campaign starting. Um, after the first game, we knew that there were areas that we, we had to improve within our game, more particularly with, our, with the bet. And to go out there and be clinical with the bet, that's a good, um, I guess, a good step in the right direction. You talk about being clinical with the bat there. Also, um, You've got to say a big thanks to your bowlers, I think, for the, for the way they bowled at the start of the game and the power play overs. Um, was that a big turning point and a big, big boost for you guys in order to limit the total that you had to chase in the second innings? Yeah, I think obviously um, us winning the toss and electing to bowl, it's obviously part of the plan to restrict them um, as much as you can. Um, our bowlers have been fantastic over the last while. Um, and again, they showed, their, they showed their skill and their class. Um, but yeah, I think it was a good day out in the field for us with the ball and also with, um, in the field as fielders. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, I'll just see if there's any other questions in the room. Uh, hi, Temba. Shubhan Chakravarti from News9. Uh, Temba, congratulations on the win. I would like to know your reaction and the team's reaction after you came to know that uh, Quinton de Kock will not uh, take the knee. And, and you know the stuff. Uh, given that uh, South Africa's history with racism and everything, what is your personal opinion about, uh, about this uh, take? And, and another question, the follow-up question will be, if uh, QDK continues to maintain this stand of not taking the knee, would South Africa seek a replacement? Okay, um, I'll try to answer the first question. Um, I think obviously as a team, we obviously surprised and taken aback um, by the news. Um, obviously, Quinton is a, is a big player for the team, not just with the bet, um, but the role he plays from a senior point of view from an, and from an experienced point of view. Um, and not having that at my disposal as a captain, you know, was obviously something I wasn't looking forward to. In saying that, you know, um, Quinton is an adult, you know, he's a man in his own shoes. Um, we respect his decision, we respect his convictions. Um, and I know that he'll be standing behind whatever decision that what the decision that he's taken. Um, from a team's point of view, you know, unfortunately, we still have to get the job done. Um, there was still a game of cricket there, still a game of cricket for our country. And it was important that as much as everything was happening, that we found a way to get into the right mental space um, and, and, and take it home for our country. The second question, um, look, I don't know how far it's going to develop. Um, I mean, it's, the decision that is taken is only today, so I can only speak about what has happened today. Um, it wouldn't be my decision whether to replace Quinton or to get a substitute. Um, that would be was probably the coach and the selectors. But as far as we stand, I mean, Quinton is still one of the players. Um, he's still one of the boys. So whatever support that he needs, whatever shoulder that he requires from us teammates will be there for him. Um, and if there's a need for further conversations to be had, I'm sure those will definitely happen amongst the guys. Thanks, Timber. We'll take it to um, our Zoom audience. We'll start with Ken. Thanks, Ibukazi. Uh, hi, Timba. Uh, congratulations. Can you just give us um, a bit of a timeline of um, when the team were notified by the board of the uh, directive to take a knee, uh, and when did Quinny announce that he was withdrawing uh, from the team? Hi, Ken. Um, the instruction from the board came in the morning. This morning, um, a meeting was convened between a couple of members. Um, and that's where that uh, message was passed on to us. We then, before, I guess, getting on the bus um, to travel to Dubai, um, that message was passed, passed, passed on to the players. Um, and I think the trip was about an hour and a half to two hours. In that trip, I guess, 
That's where Quentin made his decision. We found out, when I found out as the captain when we got to the changing room. Um, yeah. Zahir? Hi, Timber. Um, just in regards to, you just, you just mentioned the timeline. I mean, that's, that's chaotic in its own right. Uh, I mean, are you disappointed that CSA would send out something this big um, hours before a, a World Cup game? Uh, look, it's probably not ideal, Zahir. Um, but I think in, in any case, I mean, we would have had to deal with it as, as players. Um, whether the instruction came this morning, whether it came last night, I think it's, it, we would have had to deal with it as players. It definitely wasn't ideal. Um, but that, those are just the cards that we've been dealt as a team. Um, I think the good thing is that we were still able to find a way, um, get in the field and represent our country as, as, as well as we did today. Fedos? Hi, Temba. Temba, in what you're saying there, it doesn't seem as though Quentin de Kock explained his decision to you or to anyone else. Are you aware of why he doesn't want to take a knee and, and what was the conversation like amongst other players who haven't taken a knee, given that they're now being directed to? Yeah, I think, I think you've got to appreciate the fact that, I mean, the instruction um, came this morning from the board. Um, and there wasn't a great deal of time for us to kind of thoroughly discuss this matter. Um, unfortunately for us as players, it was a matter of us um, digesting what we've been told and finding a way for us to move forward. Um, we've got a couple of days till our next game, and I think, I mean, those days I think will be will be tough for the for the group. Um, but I think guys who want to know in terms of his decision, um, they will use that time um, to find out to, to find it out a bit better. Um, but I mean, like I said, Quentin is an adult. You know, he made his decision. You know, um, you you kind of have to respect the decision that he made, whether you agree with it or not. Dennis and then Nathan. Um, I just want to know, was it ever an issue in the team that everyone sort of had the, the, the option of doing their own thing? Um, I know obviously the, the obvious answer would be no, but I mean, was there ever like maybe subconsciously or something from, from one group of players that was angry with a, with a different uh, group of players that, that didn't kneel or, or anything like that? Uh, that's a tough question to answer, Dennis. Um, I mean, I don't want to be the one to be fueling any type of drama to say that a certain group um, had an issue with the fact that guys had a choice. I mean, we live in the South. Af we live in South Africa. We are governed by a constitution that allows guys um, their freedom to express their views, their choices. So. That's exactly what happened um, with this matter. I mean, I think it's something that we've spoken about, at least from a team's point of view, we've spoken about it um, extensively. There have been statements that have been issued um, to help, I guess, guide the media, guide the fans um, with, with so regards to our decision. Um, and, I, and I really don't think that I should be speaking to that again. Um, so no, I mean, I'm not, in the, I'm not in the subconscious of any player. Um, no. Nathan? Uh, Temba, first, congratulations on your victory. KG, KG, yesterday mentioned that increasing the intensity and implementing the tactics for this game was key for you guys. Do you feel you tick those boxes? Are there any areas you'd like to improve, especially against the, your next opponent in a formidable, formidable side in Sri Lanka? Additionally, give us a review of your personal performance as captain and um, batting performance, and I please, I would like to take another a closer question at the end. Thank you. Thanks, Nathan. Um, it's quite refreshing to get a cricket-based answer. Um, I think KG was spot on. You know, um, I think from a bowling point of view, you know, bowling has been our strength over the last couple of couple of months, over the last while, and I think that's probably largely due to the tactics that we've employed, but most importantly, them executing as well as they did. Um, today was another outing for them in terms of them executing um, and further stamping the confidence that we have in our bowling attack. Insofar as, um, insofar as me personally from my captaincy point of view, um, to be honest with you, probably one of the toughest days I've had to deal with as, as, as a captain. 
as 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 a leader of the team, um, and probably obvious for obvious reasons with um, with the off field with the off field matters. Um, so, look, man, I'm just glad that we were able to get into the right frame of mind as the team and play the way we play the way we played. I think we shouldn't look past our performances as a team um, coming from Australia. Um, where we lost that first one, and then coming coming up against the powerhouse West Indian side, um, and winning and winning the game with eight wickets. I don't think that should be taken lightly. Telford, and then Fedos. Hello, Timber. Very well done on winning so well despite everything. Um, I just wonder what I appreciate what you said that everyone has a choice about what they do to show their support, um, but just as not, not as a South African, not as a black South African, just as a human being. How does it make you feel when someone can't do something as simple and basic as take a knee? I don't think, I don't think Telford is that, it's, it is as simple as just taking a knee. Um, I think we have to appreciate the fact that we live in a country like South Africa that has its own past. Um, that is diverse, diverse in its views, um, diverse in, in the way people see things, their backgrounds. And, you know, decisions that we take, um, things that we support are based on our own conviction. So, I mean, as much as we're a team, you know, we wear the same shirt, we play for the badge. But, I mean, outside of that, we still live our own lives. And those lives are different, you know, by, by the very nature that we, we live in South Africa. And I think for me, I mean, over the last while, I've learned to, I guess, appreciate that a, a lot more. Um, you know, try to widen your own perspective as an indiv individual um, and not expect people to kind of see things the way that you see things. You know, my beliefs, um, the way that I see things is shaped by, you know, my own experiences, my own background, and so is the other person. So... You know, I guess if, if there is a disagreement in terms of beliefs, in terms of views, that's why we have conversations. Um, that's why we have those hard conversations. Um, and I think through those conversations, you'll be able to get the, I don't know, the comfort or the ability to, to accept the other person's decision. But I can't force anyone to see things the way that I do. Neither can they force me. So, yeah. Uh, for those, and we're going to have to wrap it up, guys. Um, we'll take the last three questions from Zahir, Tienes, and Nathan. I'm hoping that there are some cricket questions, guys, because we do have a World Cup to discuss. Thank you. Timber, you've spoken about culture, and obviously the culture is coming up a lot in cricket in this country. We've got the SJN still going on. What, what do you do now from here? Because you're making headlines on the back and the front pages and there's obviously a discussion about the culture of the team. So how do you approach the rest of this World Cup with all this happening in the background? I think for also we have to keep focusing as much as we can on the, on the team, um, more particularly about matters on the field. Um, I think we'll lose a lot of energy as, as players if we start giving 100% to everything that is... I guess being discussed outside of the team. Um, at the end of the day, I think you guys are going to judge us by how well we bowl the ball and how well we hit we hit the ball. That's what you're going to judge us by at the end of the day. I don't think you know you're going to be looking at the fact that we were martyrs or we stood for for whatever cause that that we stood for. Um, so I think me, you know, being the leader of the side at the moment is to make sure that you know our eye is on the ball. You know, we've got our next clash, like I said, in two or three days' time. So, I mean, we'll debrief today, look at look at all the things that we did right, um, look at areas that we need to improve on, and make sure that when we prepare for our next clash, we prepare for that as, as wholeheartedly as we can. But we can't control things that are happening within the media, um, but what we can control is things that are happening here within the team. Is he? Uh, Demba, here's a cricket question. Uh, today was arguably your toughest day at the office. Is it, uh, does it only get easier for the rest of the World Cup? I don't think so, Zaire, to be honest. Um, I think it's only going to get tougher. And I think it's, it's probably important that as a team, as players, we stay, we stay even more together. Um, look, it's good for us to, 
to get the ball ro- to get the ball rolling, um, to get that first win under the belt, and hopefully we can create some momentum with that. Dennis? Sorry, I'm going to go to not cricket again. Um, I just want to know, Tema, is there like sort of a feeling that it would be better for for especially the guys who don't knew, just to sort of tell everybody. You know, I'm, I, I don't mean the team. I'm sure they told the team, but, but tell the fans why they're not kneeling. Because, I mean, there's a huge outcry um, about guys who didn't want to kneel. Yeah, I think, I think to be honest, with that freedom of choice, um, as much as you have the choice to decide what you want to do, um, we, can't ex- we can't escape the consequences of the choices and decisions that we make. So I think if there's people out there who, who feel that certain things need a bit more clarity, then, you know, the fans, the media should do so. Um, I think there's nothing that stops that stops people from what's outside the team in doing so. Um, and it's probably best that you ask those guys directly. I think it does become a bit blurry when you're asking other guys about other guys. Um, so if you really wanted to get the clarity that, 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 that you seem to want, then you should probably ask those individuals themselves.